and these are the favorite parts of this job because I have a technical background. I get it. I understand working together. I understand the mechanics of a lot of things. Uh -huh. So I always enjoy that part that it's not just my craft, but it's also like this fine-tuned machine that I'm a part of that we're creating something amazing and we're all working together to do it. Who is Merrick MacArthur? Oh, wow. Who is Merrick MacArthur? Merrick MacArthur is a uh, kid from Detroit who grew up in the projects, raised by two strong Black parents. Both ended up being Detroit police officers. Uh, they raised me to have a lot of ambition, um, to have a lot of uh, confidence in myself, a lot of self-value. And uh, that kind of propelled me throughout life on a lot of things. So I'm always very proud of that. So I'm always someone who is trying to be a better person mm -hmm. and uh, trying to express myself as an artist. Awesome, man. Awesome. Um, at what point did you know that you wanted to be an actor? Hmm. It's a, it's a good question because initially, I, I friend, growing up in Detroit, we're raised to have these, uh, to aspire to be, you know, upper middle class, wealthy people with solid, you know, jobs, you know. So I I, I grew up uh, with the ambition of being an engineer. Uh, oh. And I, even though I uh, very young discovered that I had this talent for acting, like in elementary school, I didn't pursue it because the way I was raised, you grow up, you get a good job, you support a family, you, you know, you, 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 you do that kind of life. And so I started doing that. I was an engineer. I ended up moving out to uh, California and working for a company that designed satellites for space programs. So I was an electrical design engineer. Oh, wow. Uh, and even though I'd gotten into doing some acting in elementary school and then in high school, I uh, did some theater in high school as kind of dabbled a little bit, but I, I knew I really liked it, but I didn't, I didn't, I guess at the time see myself pursuing that as a career because I don't know, I guess it didn't, I didn't understand the idea of uh, that uh, not having a nine to five or a salary job was really an option for me. You know, I was like, okay, I'm, that's nice. Acting is cool, but I'm going to have that high salary job. That's what I was striving for. And it wasn't until I got a, a lot older that I said, you know what, this is what I really want for my life to get in this industry and to work as an actor. And I had to let go of that mentality of working for somebody else. Right. Um, that was hard. So like writers, you know, you, you work, you, you're creating on your own, you're working for yourself. Uh -huh. And as an actor, that's kind of the same thing as you're, you know, you're going through these different jobs, but you're essentially working for yourself. You're not, uh, you know, you're not really beholden to one employer for 20 years, you know? Right. Um, so that's kind of, uh, how that changed. It wasn't until I was much older that I started to really let go of engineering and full going through everything into pursuing an, a career as an actor. May, um, may I ask how old you were when you ooh, decided that? You um, I was over 30. <laughs> I was over 30 when I was in, uh, I started and uh, it was rough. You know, it, I think everything that I thought uh, would be rough about it was that and perhaps more than I expected um, but I, even when I got into that I still I still had that idea okay this is what I really want so I'm going for it so it was never in my mind an option to quit you know no matter how hard I got I'm like okay this is rough but this is what you know and, and I also growing up in Detroit if I if I was someone else could do it I could do it you know mm -hmm. um, and I just thought you know, yeah, I thought my career path would be engineering, but this is something that I'm feeling is deep down inside my heart. So I went for it and I just kept going. I'm still going for it. As an actor, you never really right. stop it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you, you keep you keep going. You keep growing as an actor. You keep moving through your career as, a, as an artist. That is the fact. Um, may I ask if you have representation? And the reason why I asked that question is there's a follow up question to that. Sure, I do have uh, representation. I have a, a, a theatrical agent in Los Angeles for TV shows and movies. I have a commercial agent in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a theatrical agent in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And I have a commercial agent in Detroit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the follow-up question is, 
and I'm asking just for the audience um, and, you know, aspiring actors who are looking mm -hmm. or seeking representation. Um, yeah. What did you do in order to either uh, garner their attention or gain the representation that you have? Um, you have to show them what you can do first. Mm -hmm. It's really a big catch-22 at getting a, a representation, particularly a theatrical representation, because in Los Angeles, a good rep, a good agent doesn't want to bring you on unless you've already done something. You know, you, you've done, a, you've been on a good TV show or you've been in a big movie. Right. Um, so that's like, okay, well, but I can't get on a TV show or a big movie unless I have an agent. So how do you, it's like a big catch-22. Right. So I worked around where I got to know the casting directors who are basically the people who call you in for the audition. They're the ones who present you to directors and producers. Um, they're the people that the agents go to and work with directly. So there's a way for you to go in to kind of meet the casting people. And I did that, one of the casting directors in LA, and he eventually started calling me in for auditions for the show um, Criminal Minds. And so I booked, a, booked yes. an episode of Criminal Minds, and like that, I had an agent. <laughs> it was... <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and, and and that's also a good tip. Um, is you know, there's no real one way to to gain representation. Um, no, and I and I also as a disclaimer to that too, I mean, I started later in life and I didn't go to school to be an actor, but what I've learned is that if you go to get like an MFA in drama from like NYU or uh Yale Drama School or Juilliard or any of these other schools or any, you know, Northwest, any of these other great schools for theater, when you come out, uh, they're, they're kind of looking for you right then. So it's a little bit easier if you go to school for it, a little bit easy if you go to school for it. Now, and that's that's a good point that you you brought up because I was, um, as, as I was doing a little bit of research, um, I saw that you are, are um, I guess you're being mentored by some folks from Yale Drama School or you have... A, you have some some representation. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, yes. I study with the um, these guys are faculty at Yale Drama School. Uh, it's a guy named Andrew Wood, a guy named uh, Bruce Katzman, and a guy named uh, Greg Gregory Berger Silbeck. Um, and they Yale has a particular um, system about studying acting, a certain way to go about things, a way to prepare yourself to analyze scripts all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the methodology that I use as an actor. Uh, and I still study with them to this day. And you do theater and you also do, um, you know, on set acting as well. So some on some stage and some um, TV and film. Um, which which medium do you prefer? Do you prefer theater, live acting or do you prefer um, being on mm. set? Yeah, that's a good, uh, I think it, it just, personally, I enjoy uh, film and television. Okay. Um, I I, under, I like the mechanics of it. Um, and uh, I like that that in itself, you know, the fact that it's a combination of business and your skill. Theater um, is a more of a, uh, purist type thing for an actor. That's why all the great people love to go into theater because it's your purist. You know, it's you, you're getting that that live interaction with the audience. Right. Um, it is a test of your nerves, your skill, how you can flow because your performance in theater is going to be different. Pretty much every night, you're going to have something different that's going to happen within you or within the audience. Something is going to be different, and these that's like as a purist as an actor. That's what you're there for, to have these life experiences of expressing yourself and having that feedback come back at you from a live audience. You know, that, that's a that's a great, great thing. And a lot of people contend that tr that's part of training for great actors is to do theater. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Mel Street does theater, Denzel Washington, all these guys do theater because that's like it's a purest thing as an actor. So every actor I think I know that does film and television still loves and does theater. Um, not as much. It doesn't pay as much. <laughs> Generally, unless you like a big, maybe a major Broadway show or something, but it uh, it doesn't pay as much. But it's still it's a, an amazing experience. Now you've been in a, a myriad of shows, um, such as Act Your Age, All American, Nine One One, 
recently as luck would have it with Jackie Harry and um, House of Pain, et cetera. Um, can you name an experience, um, a, a memorable experience or uh, something that either happened behind the scenes or while you were filming um, one of those shows? Like what, what is a, a, a favorite moment of yours? Um, one of the good things about working so many of these great shows and film product is you get a lot of great experiences. So there's, it's hard to choose off the top of my head. I would say, um, I had an experience working on the show nine one one and I booked this role as a, what's called a top of show guest star, which means you're like a major character. And it was multiple days of shooting on this show, this great cast. One of the cast movies is of course, Angela Bassett, yes. uh, legendary, Yes. Queen, you know, Angela Bassett. Uh, and uh, so it just so happened my first day of shooting on the show is uh, my scenes is scenes with her, her and Dawn Lewis, <laughs> Broadway <laughs> actress, also from the show Different World and many other films. Right. So they, these are my there's three of us in the scene. Angela Bassett, Dawn Lewis and me. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, that experience was uh i don't get i tend to not get starstruck i i keep it together normally but when you're standing in front of angela bassett and don lewis how do you not it, it'll it'll wear on you it'll it'll test you and i was tested so um i'm trying to keep it i'm supposed to be this stern police chief in this scene mm -hmm. and i'm you know giving angela bassett and don's the riot act and uh it was hard i mean i i i thought i was keeping it together and director's like hey why don't you be a little bit meaner to Angela Bassett. I'm like, what did you hear what you just said? You said be <laughs> meaner to Angela. And Angela Bassett, she's a just beautiful woman, uh, very nice, um, very gracious, you know. And uh uh that that was at, at one point after later in the scene, I said I had to break down. I said, you know what? I'm telling you, it's an honor to work with you two in this scene. And they're like, thank you, they're very nice. But that was one of those things was like, you know what. You know, when you say you want to be an actor and you want to make it in, in the business and you find yourself standing in front of Angela Bass and Don Lewis, you have that feeling like I'm doing something. And that was one of those that was one of those times. Right. Right. Um, I'm glad that you 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 brought up that moment, um, because one of my questions is um, and it, it, it stems from. I'll, I'll just ask the question, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. so, so you audition for a role, you yes. land the role. And then you arrive on set on the first day. Um, can you give us a glimpse into the life behind the scenes as an actor uh, for those who dream to make it onto set one day? Sure. And that's a great thing for uh, aspiring actors to understand is that as much as you train to be an actor on stage or screen, you know, honing your craft as an actor, it's a business when you step on that set and you need to understand that part. So they treat you well when you walk on set. You walk in, they will escort you to where your trailer is or wherever your dressing room is. Um, they make sure you're fed well. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is that when you get on the set and you're working, um, you need to understand the technical aspects of it. You know, the fact that you're in a, me in a scene with Angela Bass and Don Lewis, they're going to shoot a wide shot of the three of us Then they'll shoot and over the shoulder from behind me facing them, and we do the same scene. Then they turn the camera around, they do a shot from behind their shoulders facing me. These are things that you don't really think about right. when you're studying an actor, but these are technical things you gotta know. Um, and you wanna know who does who does what. You know, that director that's there, what's he gonna be expecting from you? The people, the gaffers that are doing the lighting, what do you need, what do you, what do you, what are they doing for you? How you need to work with them. The script supervisor, you know, why is she coming over? Or why is this person coming over saying, hey, you said and instead of the, so you really need to make sure that's, I mean, these are things that are happening and you got and swirling people around you all the time, the crew, the production, the camera people, all of them, and realizing that, that you're all in this together. You try to act the scene with someone else, but it's like 30 people that are that are making this happen. So you, under, you want to understand what all these people do and respect them and make sure they you help them do their job too. Not just, you know, you doing the scene, but also make sure you understand why they need you to do certain things, why you need to be ready um, when they need you to do something different you didn't expect. Um, there's lots of technical reasons behind this. So the technical aspects of things are what you want to understand. And um, 
and these are the favorite parts of this job because I have a technical background. I get it. I understand working together. I understand the mechanics of a lot of things. Uh -huh. So I always enjoy that part that is not just my craft, but it's also like this fine-tuned machine that I'm a part of that we're creating something amazing and we're all working together to do it. Uh, that that sequence that you just described, about how long does that one scene take? Um, you know, the multiple camera angles, um, mm -hmm. but just for maybe, you know, a minute to five minutes of of dialogue. Um, mm -hmm. How long does that process take? It will take hours because um, when they set up your camera, they also have to set up the lighting. They have to make sure that things are in the shot that they want. How are they going to move the camera during your scene? Are they going to are they going to dolly shot it? Are they going to just pan it? These are things they're they've decided or working on and have to make the decision on. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. So when you walk on the set, typically actors on a TV show get there at six in the morning, seven in the morning. You might not actually work on set until 11 a.m. You're waiting for four hours because you go to your trailer, you get checked in. They bring over your wardrobe. Then you got to go to hair and makeup. Then that has to be all approved by the producer director to make sure they like, like what, that you look right for what they want. And then you go and wait for them to get to your part for today's shoot because they're shooting multiple things in a day, not just your scene. Mm -hmm. So it takes a while. It'll, it'll take you, um, it's an eight hour thing. A one scene can take you six hours. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. One thing, it'll take six hours. And you, these are parts of the thing as an actor in the business is that sometimes it's a lot of sitting around, not sitting around, but sometimes it's a lot of um, everyone else getting prepared as you are as well. So that's something to be prepared for is, you know, it's not going to be an in and out thing. You got to go in there. You're going to wait. You got to make sure that everyone else is together. And then you all go in and you do this thing together at the right time. Yeah. A lot, lot of moving parts. That is yeah. for sure. Um, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about auditioning. Um, for one, do you still get nervous when you go in for an audition? Uh, no, <laughs> but there's a couple things. Now, at the time of this taping, you know, we're still dealing with the self-tape uh, thing that's happening since the pandemic. Right. So the only times that I'm going into audition these days are for Sometimes it's commercials that will have an in-person audition. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, every TV show for the last couple of years has only been doing self-tapes where you're at home or you go somewhere and you tape your audition and you send it in. Right. Um, for commercials, it's there's no... For commercial, this is a departure from theatrical, commercial is a very different animal than t film and television in that commercial involves a lot of improv, um, a lot of instinct. Um, so when I go into a commercial audition, I'm just letting my instincts take control of things because that's what will book you the job on a commercial audition is how natural and instinctual you are to do things and how well that that's received. Um, you can't really rehearse too much on a commercial because they're looking for that instinct. Because when you audition for the commercial and you book the job on a commercial shoot, they're going to have you instinctually do different things all the time, very different from what you might think you would have done the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. But for theatrical auditions, the reason I'm not nervous is because I come prepared for the audition. I come um, ready to be flexible. Uh, I'm prepared to do it exactly as I planned, but I'm also prepared to not do it exactly as I planned. And that's a very key thing to have and be ready for because when you go into a theatrical audition, they're generally going to ask you to do it differently, slightly than what you brought in. They'll say, that was great. Now do it again, but now do this. And right. if it's a long scene, they're like, okay, that was great. But see, at the beginning, I want you to change this. And in the middle, I want you to do that. But in the end, keep what you did, but kind of do it more this way. And you got to remember all that and then go do it again, like they said. You know, and these are things that with practice, you can pick up on how to do that. So that's, again, it's practice, it's preparation and being ready and prepared to do it differently than what you plan. Okay. Can you talk about being yourself and, as well as being confident, uh, whether it be self-taping or um, going in for an audition? Uh, well, the, the argument for self-taping is that you can do it as much as you want so you feel like it's perfect before you send it in. 
And that's the argument for stealth taping. And um, it's a valid argument. Uh, however, a lot of times when you're trying to do it, you know, 10 times to get it right, you go back and you realize the first time you did it was the best time, the best take. Right. You know, that's one thing about it. Um, and people, I think, worry about in-person because they feel like, oh, no, I'm only going to, they're going to allow me to do maybe two two times maximum. So I'm nervous. I want to get it right those first two times. And uh, you got to really let go of that. You know, you got to really go in. As long as they know you're prepared, you know, you might do it, come in with an idea of how you want to do the character. And mm -hmm. it might be completely wrong. And it's okay. That's not quite what we want you to do it this way differently and do try it that way differently. And that's, that's fine. Um, and you've got to be able to let it go. You know, one thing about auditions is I do a lot of them, yeah. a lot of self tapes in persons, a lot of them. And because I know there's always another one coming, I never get hung up on one, no matter how much I like the role. Cause right. like, yes, I like the show, but there's still other roles I like coming down the line. So don't get like, you know, too wound up about this, this one thing, go and do your best, enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. And then let it go. Walk out of that room or leave that self tape as as you you put what you got out there and, and keep moving. And that's all you can do. And that's okay because the casting people will notice if you're if you're consistent, if you're consistently prepared and you're consistently flexible to change, that kind of stuff is what they look for when they call you back in more and more. Mm -hmm. Um what would you say is a common misconception? Um as an actor in Hollywood um, or working in this business, is there a common misconception or a myth? <laughs> Have you been able to dispel any myths? <laughs> I think uh, a lot, I think, you know, the main con misconception is that we're all rich. <laughs> you know, we're all like rolling a dough for making a movie, do one TV show, suddenly we're rich. Um, no, it's, you know, it, it takes a while, but it's like, it's the it's the the actors that are consistently pursuing and going after it and work and building up um, that end up building that wealth over time. Um, mm -hmm. Another misconception, I would say, uh, oh, that it's easy. <laughs> right. uh, you just oh man, you just get over talking. You're just saying where you just read it from the script. What's the problem? You know that's uh, they're they're the very good actors make it look easy. Denzel Washington makes it look easy. Yes. Uh, Angela Bassett makes it look easy. Absolutely. Mel Street makes, they make it look easy. You know, these guys, they, uh, and that's part of the craft of it is like you, you, you make it look effortless, but it's a lot of preparation, a lot of hard work and takes a lot of time and it takes years. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I've seen a lot of are people that will move to Los Angeles or they might move to any big center like Atlanta or New York and they think, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to, Go for it. Within a couple months, I should be on a TV show and I'm going to be making money like, you know, no, it takes years. It years. really does. Yes. You're going to see people that seem to come out of nowhere. Like, oh, they just came out of nowhere and they made it 99.9% of the time. No, they were doing stuff well before you saw them. The casting people saw them and now they're just they're making it now and you just haven't seen it, but they've been working for years. Right. So, and it, you, you're absolutely right. There's so many times that I've watched a movie and then, you know, I say that person is my favorite actor. And then you go back and you watch a movie from, you know, 10, 15 years ago. I'm like, I had no clue that this person was in this movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's just surprising to see, you know, how much work goes into um, your career and how many things that you do uh, sometimes that go unnoticed. And sometimes, you know, you, you get all of the accolades, um, Sometimes it just, you know, it just happens for you where it seemingly appears to be overnight. Um, right. I've spoken to many uh, on the writing side. I've spoken to many writer, director, producers. Um, as an actor, do you have any aspirations um, to extend yourself into p potentially the directing or producing realm at some point? Uh, I've only done a little bit of the producing um, for independent projects, uh, small independent projects. I still, and it's it's fun. I, I and I look at it as me being part of the machinery to build something, right? Um, for and someone else acting in it, not me. Um, and it's you know it's fun if I enjoy the project. And if there's nothing, no acting role for me in it, and I'm part of that, that's great. Um, but I'm but I'm still 
you know, my, my career as an actor is still paramount for me. You know, I, once I'm, I'm here to make my mark in that and have, uh, you know, sort of an opus moment for me with this career before I stray off into directing and producing. I've been asked a couple of times. I'm like, ah, I, I, I wouldn't recommend me for one. I'm not a, I could po possibly do it, but I wouldn't say I would, I have so many other friends I know that are fantastic directors that I would recommend before I would jump in there to do it. Okay. That's yeah. fair, fair enough. Let's, let's uh, talk a little bit about Alison <clears throat> Faust, um, Act Your Age. Uh, you starred on uh, Act Your Age or you, you were on Act Your Age. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how many episodes you were on Act Your Age. Um, yeah. 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 Was, awesome. uh, I was going to say, she was, I was gonna say, I'm sorry. I was going to say that she was the very first interview that I, I did uh, for the Black Script. Um, and she was gracious enough to give me her time. Um, and I was just curious to know. I, I've talked to Rodney Barnes. I, I, I found out that her and Rodney Barnes are friends. Um, and uh, I believe the two of you know each other well, outside of even you doing the, the role in Act Your Age. Uh, what is it like working with her? Um, yeah, Allison Faust, you know, Act Your Age is probably, I don't think I have had a more fully welcoming experience on a TV production as I have with Act Your Age with Allison Faust. Now, it's funny with that, that show, the casting director that they were using to cast the show, I, she calls me in for lots of things and I have auditioned for multiple parts on the show before the role I ended, end up getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, and I didn't know Allison Faust before that, but I'm auditioning and I notice I'm getting more auditions for this one show. I'm like, I don't even know what the show is. It's not out yet. So I keep auditioning and I finally get this uh, part in the show. And uh, it's turned out to be a wonderful scene with Yvette Nicole Brown. And uh, then after watching the show and seeing all the other characters, I'm like, this was the perfect fit for me. This role was a perfect, the other characters wouldn't have worked. There's reasons why. But this one absolutely does. And that's one thing I love about it in this business is you keep going because you think, oh, I'm failing. I'm getting rejected. No, you're not. They're, you're not failing. You're not even getting rejected. They're just trying to find the right fit for you. And right. that was my experience with this show. So right. I get on the show and I'm working with, and we have a, this, you know, uh, full ep full episode with her multiple scenes with uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. And she's just funny. I mean, she's got the background, her experience in the industry. She's just comedy gold as it is. It was, it was a little easier for me to play off of her because she's just hilarious. And wow. she's a genuinely good person. She cares about every single person on set. And Allison Faust embraced me with open arms. Like I felt something because when I got to set and Allison Faust came up to me, she greeted me, but she greeted me as a thank you for finally getting in here. Like she'd been trying to get me on the show. Right. And I felt that. And it was like, a, it was one of those good feelings. Like, yeah. So we uh, do our scenes. And it's a fantastic episode, very funny. And then after we're done shooting, uh, they hadn't, the show hadn't even come out yet. And they were doing like a, rele a release party and things like that. And they're inviting me to the release party. I mean, I, you know, I haven't done that many episodes. I've only done one episode, but it was a good episode. And right. they, the red carpet, they're inviting me all the stuff. And I'm like, thank you. And it was Allison who's doing this. She's like, yeah. And she's the kind of person, she sees actors that she loves and wants to work with. She treats them very well. And that was my experience with her is that she made sure that I got, got all the stops rolled out for me as being part of this amazing project in the show with, uh, with, uh, with actor age. So I'm hoping to be back on. <laughs> I, was, our, I was going yeah. to say, because I, I know there's certain things we can't really discuss because right. of the ongoing strikes. Right. Uh, but I, I was going to also say, I hope it does come back for, uh, another season and that you you know are able to to have more screen time and uh you know extend your role even further yeah so, yeah yeah and they they bring characters back uh just in the last, that first season and it was it debuted as like the highest rated show on bounce tv network yes. and it still does well um i'm looking forward to coming back as well uh and bounces tv has got another shows off the ground too that are looking really good as well like uh the johnsons or was it awesome. johnson? johnson yeah yeah uh and a guy I, in my theater company is on that show too so cool. um yeah yeah so yeah I'm, i have a lot of high i can't say much 
<laughs> but yes, yeah. Allison, I've definitely kept in touch yeah. since we filmed. Um, <laughs> so is the director from that episode, uh, Linda Tarek. Uh, and you've got no Cole Brown. We run into multiple times. You know, awesome. we, we we out on the picket line, we run into each other on the picket line. So um, there, everyone there, uh, nice. And Tisha Campbell, I met on set the, uh, when I got there. It was by like a crafty table. And mm -hmm. Tisha Campbell is Tisha Campbell. And I'm standing out there and I hear her voice. I turn her over. She's looking. She's on the phone talking. I was like, you know, Star Trek, hold it together, Merrick moments. She kind of gives me a little wink. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, that was a great experience as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool to get to get yeah. that acknowledgement, too. And even when yeah. you walk into a room, you may not necessarily know everybody, but uh, to to get either that admiration or to know that other people they they recognize you you know that that's got to be an awesome feeling um as far as getting into character uh do you have any any methods to your madness what do you do to get into character yes i do that's one of the things i study to uh get into character is a term that's used but really what you're doing is you're you're the characters you're letting the character out of yourself you know, each part of a character you do, there's some parts of that character that are real within you. So you need to find those parts and let those parts come out. So uh, that's one of the things I do is figure out, you know, what 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 do I really relate to with this character and um, and how to bring that out. But it's 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 still me. You know, it, people say, oh, you're playing a character. Yeah, I'm playing me as this character. Um and so that's one thing that actors should always know is that, you know, when they say they're looking for you, you're the real you, that's what they mean is in that character, find something of, that's real within you and let that part come out because that's what gets the attention. You try to do a character where you think, oh, this is what people must want to see in this character. And that's not because everyone's, you know, that's not what works. What you got to do is bring out that uniqueness within yourself. So um, finding out what's what's true about that character for me mm -hmm. uh, and and then living in the world of that character. You know, who am I? Who am I as this character? Um, what is my objective with this character, with this role? What is my objective? Um, what am I doing to achieve that objective? Um, right. What what happens if I don't? achieve that objective what happens if i do achieve that objective these are that's that's the yale methodology right there do you have a, a dream role that you um aspire to you know a dream role or even um work with somebody you know you have aspirations with to work with somebody um in the industry that you have yet to work with who would that person be a dream role. Um, I I see myself as someone who's who's going to excel in the authoritative figures, the detectives, the attorneys. Mm -hmm. um, these are kind of where I'm, where I where my my main architect falls into, okay. um, which is great. Um, and I embrace that. You know, everyone, every actor think, oh, I want to play any kind of thing. I want to be the next, you know, Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, it's cool. But establish yourself as this thing first and then to branch out. That's how it should work. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as who to work with, there's many. I, I'd love to, you know, work with Gary Oldman. I, of course, love to work with Denzel Washington. I'd love to work with Viola Davis. I'd love to work with all the greats um, if I could. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say there's one in particular. Um, but I think uh, when you find yourself, you know, on set with these experienced actors you try to learn from them as much as you can um ask them questions watch what they're doing how they're handling things because these are things that are going to help you as an actor so that when it's your time to shine up there you know you have a better sense of what you're doing and ha have you received any um words of advice from anybody uh throughout your um acting career um that has helped you uh whether it's on set or um landing a role through an audition or self-tape i would say um it's one of the bigger hurdles that a lot of working actors starting out have is getting past this idea of auditions being some sense of uh failure or rejection um you got the audition you won 
because there's hundred, literally hundred people that are trying just to get the audition. So now you have the audition, you have a mandatory audience for you to do what you love to do, which is be an actor and act. It's a couple lines, it can be a couple pages, but you now have an audience that has to watch you act in the industry and that's your win. So I always look at it like that. And so as long as I'm going in there prepared and having, enjoying what I do and, and leaving the uh, audition room, happy with what I did, I'll never be upset about not getting a role. So that's some advice I got years ago because you know that's that's one of the things that people say, oh, how do you handle all that rejection as an actor? It's like, well, I, I don't consider rejection. You know, if I don't, if I don't get, I consider auditions the win. And if I don't get the audition, I never knew I was even up for it. So I, I never feel it. I'm always like, Hey, I got another audition. As long as I'm getting auditions consistently, and especially if you're getting them from the same casting people over and over, that yeah. means you're, you're making it. That means that they know you got something They're just trying to find the right role for you. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I learned early on. And that's helped me. It's helped me quite a bit in those times when, you know, a lot of people would have been like, hung it up. <laughs> That's, you know, you get, you go, you go to these auditions and you don't get the job and you, you know, people, other people think, oh man, how are you put up with that? It's like, well, that's because I let getting the job go. It's not about getting the job. It's about doing, doing my best at that audition. As far as uh, diversity goes, um, mm -hmm. do, do you see um, any strides or um, any, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is. I guess, do you see any any growth in providing more diversity um, in, in casting um, new roles and then also even behind the scenes with, uh, you know, production? Um, is that something, a part, of, a part of what we're trying to do with the Black Script is, is provide a pipeline for um, more diversity within the industry? Um, right. And, and to provide uh, education for aspiring actors, screenwriters, filmmakers, I mean, and even and even people who are um, behind the camera. My my goal, or what I would like to see, um, and and part of the change that I would like to see is is more diversity. And mm -hmm. I know it, it's been discussed several times in Hollywood. Um, I was just curious to know if you've seen any any change in that, or any I would say growth in that. I would say uh, yes, and in some parts, no. You know, uh, since I've started in the business, I mean, since watching media as a kid, but lots and lots of growth. But and since I started in this industry, I see that um, my experience is that um, the diversity is encouraged because they the industry understands that this this you know non Caucasian audience makes money, yes. you know. Uh, Asian people, black people, Indian people, never that's that's money that they they left on the tables for decades, decades. Right. Yes. Now they're starting they, they they see Tyler Perry and oh, oh really? Right. He's making money. Oh shoot, I didn't know that was a deal. So now they're all picking up on that. And that's why you're seeing a lot more diversity because um it's money that's on the business side of it. Now on the creative side, people are understanding that it's not just that their faces are different. Their perspectives are different. Their life experiences, are, my life experience is different. Yes. Um, as a black man, it's different as a black man growing up from Detroit. It's different from a black man growing up in DC. So these are things that enrich a story. It enriches their product because it is, it's, it's, it's uh, more, you know, it, it just, it's got more to it, you know, and it, it, it resonates better and stronger and deeper when you have that diversity aspect in your project. And I know that there are certain you know, producers, directors that, oh, well, I only see, this is just what I see. This is just my people. I'm like, okay, well, fine. For the people that are only, your people that only watch, but for a wider audience, mm -hmm. you're, not, you, you're not hitting with them. You, know, you, you don't care about that, fine. But people that really do want to resonate with everybody, they're starting to see that that's a thing. That makes a better, richer project. So, right. um, you know, whether it's an all black cast, whether it's an all Asian cast, or it's a mix, um, it's like these are elements that we're adding to this the media sphere, the system that is now enriching our experiences watching media. And I see that as still progressing. Now, on the other hand of that, <clears throat> I think, uh, who was, I think uh, Viola Davis said this in one of her speeches about how she's like thankful that they wrote the role for me, you know, because a lot of times these roles are written for people that are not 
brown or black. They're whatever reason written for these other, you know, other uh, people that are Caucasian. And it's like, it's, I look at it as like, wow, it's a cop out. Like, wow. You, so you just, <laughs> you just, you just, your world is, oh, the white, the white man or woman is the only thing that could helm this project. Is that what you really think is the, the world is like now? Um, so it's almost kind of sad to see that. Um, so I understand the old sentiment. It's like, yeah, it's like, thank goodness there are people that are seeing that, hey, you know, people of color can can helm a project and make it very successful. Um, and so I, I still haven't seen that inching progressing as fast as a full cast. Right. You know, I think main characters are kind of still sort of, you know, sort of stuck inching along, whereas the aspect of a full cast universe is something that's just like people are getting it. People are seeing that more, you know. So, uh, yeah, my answer would be for the most part, yes, but some parts, no. And we're, and we're still working on it. We're still, we just got to show it. We Step just got to show it to be yeah. done. You know, yeah. that's all it is. And we need and we need writers to to put that up. They're like, hey, this is my character. You know, Luke Cage, character, yeah. great, successful. You know, so that's, and it's working together on this. Actors being ready, writers given the opportunity, writing these creative and amazing stories. And that's how, that's how it happens, I think. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I'm always curious to know, um, you know, what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, because in some cases you do see, um, you know, a, a variety of faces, a variety of um, um, ethnicities, um, and you, you do see more diversity. And then in some aspects of it, like you said, it's it's still the, the old school way of Hollywood. But I feel like we're starting to to scratch the surface and, mm -hmm. and transition into a place to where um, all of us are given more opportunity, um, whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera. Um, writing, uh, you know, uh, part of the crew, things of that nature. I feel like those things need to shift in order to make a better Hollywood. Um, and also, you know, so that way there's more opportunity out there. Um, and so that's that's what I'm striving to do with, with the Black script. Um, I was just curious to, to get your standpoint and your take on it. Um, I, I appreciate your answer. Um, uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, what are your main thoughts on diversity? Do you feel like it's progressing or do you feel like it's stagnant? So I, I do feel like it's progressing. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's more so not necessarily from what I see. I, I do see it, um, but I'm seeing it from the aspect of the viewer, not necessarily the aspect of the person who is actually on set and behind the scenes. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why, you know, I, I ask you all uh, these questions because these are answers that I don't know. And these are also answers that I feel are important to ask. So that way we do know, okay, where do we need to include uh, more action or, you know, uh, sh uh, put more spotlight on this until we get to a place to where um, we, we want it to be. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the change that we want to see. Um, but on the other side, I, I am seeing more opportunities for, um, black and brown people, Asian people, um, indigenous. Um, and I feel like there can still be more. I think it's it's not as it's not as constant as you know the majority of the shows that are out there. Yes. Uh, and, and, and the moment the moment we get a show that's a hit show, it seems like they pull it away from us or they cancel it and you know um, mm -hmm. and I'm always curious as to as to why, especially if it's a hit show. Uh, uh, I'm thinking Lovecraft Country right now. Lovecraft yes. Country? You kid me? You kid me? <laughs> that, that was my show? favorite show. That was my favorite show. <laughs> How would you pull that show off? It was. It had everything. It was. It. I. Uh, it, it blew me away every episode. I'm still hurt. I'm yep. still mad <laughs> that he pulled that show off. Yes. I'm, I just. I don't know, man. <laughs> well, one of the things that I saw, and uh, it, I was unaware of this until I saw a clip. Um, and it's it's. A, a friend of mine, um, she runs a, a a script a screenwriting service. Her mm -hmm. name is Shannon Johnson, Shannon E. Johnson. I actually just spoke with her earlier today, um, but she put a clip on her Instagram. Um, I don't know what what it was from, but it's it spoke to the fact of some of these networks would would green light, you know, black and brown shows, 
they would obtain the audience to attract advertisers. The moment they got the advertisers and they were in bed with the advertisers, they would cancel the show. <laughs> and so oh. it, it, it kind of led me to believe, is this what is happening, you know, um, behind the scenes? And I know there in every industry, there's some dirty tricks that that go on. Um, and I'm not saying that this is the case in every aspect of Hollywood, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, <laughs> I, 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 that is some dirty, you know what, right there for sure, yes. for sure. And I, like you, I wouldn't be surprised. I actually, um, it was, I, I can't confirm this individually, but uh -huh. just recently someone told me that, you know, this the writer's contract that they have, where they have this mandatory minimum, mandatory minimum for the writer's room. There's one particular project, um, they get this writer goes on to the, to to do the writing that, oh, we're gonna do it on Zoom. So he gets on Zoom and it's like only a couple people there. He's like, wait a minute, what about the minimum? They're like, oh, no, no. Yeah, that's for a, a meeting. This isn't technically a meeting because we're on Zoom right now. It was, this is your writer's room. That's not technically what this is. This is just writers getting together. The room is a physical thing. This is something else. So therefore we're gonna go this way. So that was like a loophole oh. <laughs> to, to get out of the minimum in the writer's room. And like, it's also wow. probably a way to where they don't have to pay them as much also, yeah. you know, they, they find ways to cut corners and this is why, you know, the, the, these strikes go on yeah, you know, to make sure that everybody receives fair and just do, you know, yeah. with their talent, their work, their time, um, their livelihood. This is very important. This is not just, you know, you know, fun and games. This is people's, no. people's lives. No. are because of the strikes that are going on. Yeah, that's one thing that I always interest, uh, find fascinating too about this and, and depressing is that this industry, some of the some of the people, perhaps a, a few, but a powerful few um, right. in this industry feel that their business can't be successful unless they denigrate and demean the work of the other people that are building the business up. Yeah. Like you gotta cut, cut, do that to a writer that you gotta do that for your business to be successful. You got to make sure actors can't get paid well for your, that's what you got. And you're sitting back on a yacht and three houses in Italy. You telling me that this has to happen or else your business can be successful. That's right. what like kills me, man. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. but the way of thinking, you would think that by doing everything it is, you know, that the writer, not everything, but, you know, make it fair for the writer, for the actors um, and for, for everybody else, you know, cast, crew, um yeah. as long as you keep them happy they will continue to line your pockets i don't understand right. why you would uh you would do this to the the very people who pay you yeah or yeah. Who, who bring the money in i should say who bring the money in for you yeah yeah i think uh perhaps many of them have this misconception that uh that they that people who work like you and i do don't have the value make it work it to pay us as if if they paid us more it wouldn't it wouldn't make us more committed or, or add to our longevity in the industry make our lives richer better so that we can perform better as as creative people right. you know as if it's not going to make a difference to us that we're still just going to be working you know i i don't know i don't i don't <laughs> Right. And, and then you also I, have to think about the generations to come when they see that, you know, the what's currently happening with the strikes, it, it might change their mind. Like, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to deal with what, you know, they're dealing with. I would I I love acting or I love writing or, you know, I I, I wanted to, to be in Hollywood, but it doesn't seem feasible or doesn't seem like it's something that, um, you know, I can actually earn a living at, you know, earn a living at, because look what's happening now. Yeah. And, you know, so yeah, it, it, it pushes people away in different, different ways. Um, yeah. And yeah. I don't think that they're thinking long-term, they're thinking about the, you know, their bottom dollar, short-term gains. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe that greed is blinding in some senses, you know, like they just, yeah. And, you know, they come, I, I hate to judge people, but they, <laughs> in some cases, they come from Silver Spoon life. Yeah. They've never had to struggle. They've never had to deal with some of the things that we've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've always been, 
you know, kind of, you know, propped up on a cushion somewhere. Sure. They've never had to experience that life. So they don't, not to, not to give an excuse, but maybe they don't know that life. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like uh, so many of these businesses are all about cutting costs instead of just making a better product. Yes. You make a better product. You don't have to worry about the cost so much because you make enough superior product. Make a quality product. Let people write quality scripts. You ain't got to worry about cutting writers out of stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, you got to, the money's going to be there. If you're making bad products, then yeah, you're probably going to have to cut costs. So why not try to make a better product? Yeah. So, so everybody's happy. I don't know. <laughs> one thing I say this one thing that I, that that this is this is just my take on it. Um, I feel that going through the pandemic, even though it was bad for a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, and and also adding on with the strikes and and everything that's going on, it's opening a lot of people's eyes, a lot of creatives' eyes to the fact of, you know what, there's other ways that we can approach this system in a new way, new way of thinking. And we don't necess necessarily have to go the the route that, you know, has, has been put in front of us. We There's right. other ways to, to, you know, to, to make films, to uh, finance our own projects. Mm -hmm. We can make shorts, we can make webisodes or web series. Um, all of that. And there's now, you know, a multitude of streaming platforms where you can actually submit your work mm -hmm. uh, and you don't really have to do the Hollywood thing. Right. Uh, and, and that leads me to a, to a question for you, which um, I guess is, would you ever consider working on independent projects or have you worked on independent projects? I certainly have. Uh, yeah, and I and I will again. I, I'm actually cast in a uh, a SAG low budget entity that's filming uh, early next month. Um, it's an all I think it's I believe it's an all black cast too. But yeah, absolutely. I'm still down for the. I mean, um, a lot of times uh, these independent films. This is where you get in your next. You know, you're getting your next Spielbergs from this. You're getting your next Spike Lee's from this. Imagine, right. I, I'm trying to think who turned down uh, She's Got to Have It when he was at NYU. Like, oh, man, this is independent. I'm not doing that, you know? Yeah. You know, and you don't, you know, really, these people are, are coming up. So I look at that. Um, and then sometimes as an actor, I like to get involved. I like to do, you know, I'm not in any casting any TV shows right now. So, of course, I'm more available. Mm -hmm. But if it's something cool and fun I'm interested in, yes, Absolutely. Um, there have been any products that I've said, I'm sorry, I can't do this because right. it just wasn't, I wasn't feeling the role, right. but I'm certainly open to them. I absolutely am. The only issue I have now with any product <laughs> uh, is that because I have agents representation that are constantly submitting me to stuff, especially right. when we were not in strike, um, for me to tell my agent, hey, I'm going to take a week off to do this any project that's going to pay me, you know, a few hundred dollars. Yeah. So I can't be available. And he's like, wait a minute, I got you ready for this, you know, multi-thousand dollar per day project. And you go on and so I, I got to deal with that. But otherwise, and it's never really been a problem, but those are the risks, some of the risks you have in doing that. But it's like, hey, I, I want to do it if it's there. If I, if I feel a, if I feel a connection to the role, I'm totally open to do that. Right. And not only that, uh, in, in some cases, working on independent projects could lead to you having either a, a lead role you're able to you're able to actually utilize your acting chops even more um, than you know when you're working in in TV and film for a network where they you know they they say only you know stick to the, stick to these lines and that's it. Whereas in on the independent side, maybe they might um, you, you got know, a little bit more freedom. You got a little more freedom to play, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I would say that's certainly true. Yeah, yeah. You have look. You have a little bit more fun with it. Um, you probably be you know. Uh, easier for you to introduce your own ideas about certain things about how the performance can go. Yeah. Cause certainly with uh, TV shows, they have a certain machinery, a certain style they want to see, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want you straying beyond that, but independence you certainly do. And uh, especially actors, even me, I, I do this. If there's a certain type of character that I want to show that I can play and this right. indie project comes up, but Hey, I've been wanting to play this kind of role before. 
And now I got this role I've done. I can show Kath, hey, this is something else I can do. Just so you know, if you come across this, I yes. can do this too. That's an also that's another way that indie products are very beneficial. You know, exactly. Yeah, it gives you the it gives you the example that you need to show, yeah. you know, for for other future projects. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That yeah. is awesome. Um, well, well, Merrick, I. I think I, I went through all the questions that I had for you. <laughs> However, um, there is one more um, one more thing, which is a final word, whether it be a quote, a piece of advice, or words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, that is to the audience. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would like to say to the audience? Ooh, I, I was I love quotes. I can't think of any good ones off the top of my head. I will say there's one that I'd like to use that is fall down seven times, stand up eight. Mm. Meaning doesn't matter. You you fall down, you get back up. You right. keep going. You know? Yeah. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Um where where can the people find you? Um as far as watching me on TV? Well TV, film and then also your social media. Oh, on social media, you can find me on Instagram at the real Merrick MacArthur on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook, I tend to do people that I've met personally, but why not? <laughs> Merrick MacArthur on uh, on Facebook. I also have my professional Facebook page. It's Merrick MacArthur, the actor. Um, and I'm also on threads as the real Merrick MacArthur as well. I have the blue check mark. So. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been trying to get into threads, but I I, I, I haven't quite figured it out yet. But you, you know what? When it first came out, it was cool for the first couple of days. Everyone was all about it because it was like, hey, let's get out of this old Twitter stuff and we're having fun. And right. now it's just like, yeah, it's cool. But it's like we, you know, yeah. we've already got Instagram and there's Facebook right there. So threads is trying to find its, its little niche in our lives right now. That's all it is. Merrick MacArthur, man, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on Black Script. I appreciate it.